When installing a custom car audio system, we must install a fuse that's on the connection between our battery and our aftermarket amplifiers. But the challenging part is with the addition of this fuse, we need somewhere that we can mount it. Since this is often under the hood of the vehicle, we want to make sure that we pick the right location. We also want to mount the fuse block in a way that it is secure and robust. So how do we do this properly? I'm currently working on adding all of this gear into a truck build and I figured now would be the perfect time to show you how I mount a fuse. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I'm Mark, let's dive in and get started. All right guys, so this here, this is the inline fuse that I need to mount somewhere underneath the hood of the vehicle near the battery. It's obviously a 200 amp fuse and this inline fuse holder, the fuse itself and all the different wiring that I'm using throughout this build are from show sponsor, New Concepts. When you're doing a car audio build, it's very important to get quality wire. That's why I'm using the New Concepts Colossus Flex wire. This is OFC wire and it is extremely flexible. Even for this being zero gauge, I can easily run this throughout the vehicle. I can curve it around wherever I need to. Having nice flexible wire just makes the whole install easy when we have flexible wire because we can pick a better location for this. I use New Concepts wire and power distribution throughout all my builds. If you guys want to learn more, check out the link down in the video description. So I need to come up with a good location for this fuse holder to sit. Now, a couple of tips here on things you should avoid. Try to avoid being near the engine if possible because obviously there's excess heat associated with the engine. If you can be away from it, it's always a good thing. Secondly, of course you wanna be as close to the battery as possible. And I know that there's this kind of common rule out there of 18 inches. I actually don't like that rule because what I think is more important is understanding that you need the wire between the fuse and the battery terminal to be as short as possible. The reason for that and the whole reason that we add a fuse in the first place is not to protect the gear. That's actually a common misunderstanding. It's actually to protect the wiring. If the wire were to short anywhere in the vehicle, we don't want it to short out and start on fire. We want the fuse to blow instead. And if we think about it, the run between the end of the fuse block here and the power supply, the battery, it's actually unprotected. So we want to limit the potential of that wire possibly shorting out on something. That's why we we want to keep it as short as possible. Now the other thing I try to avoid is having the inline fuse right above the factory fuse block. I see a lot of people do this. Sometimes people will drill holes through the top of this box. Try to avoid that if you can. Obviously in some engine compartments there's hardly any space to work with so in that situation sometimes you do have to go above something and then you know just have to undo this inline fuse if you need to access whatever is below it. But if you can and I think I can in my situation here, we're going to avoid blocking that out. So I've spent some time looking around here and I think the best location for this inline fuse holder is going to be right here. Obviously it's only a couple of inches over to the positive terminal of the battery. I can easily loop the wire around on this side to wherever I need to go because I'm using that nice flexible wire. There's nothing underneath here that I need to worry about having access to. And there's a nice piece of plastic right here that I can drill through in order to put screws through and tap into whatever bracket I end up fabricating and having right here. So I know I want my fuse holder right here, which means I'm gonna have some sort of L-shaped bracket that bolts through into this. So I need to come up with my design. A great way to come up with a design before we spend a bunch of time making this out of plastic is to just use a piece of cardboard, or in my case, this is a really thin cardboard called chipboard, but you could just use part of a cereal box or any other cardboard container. So I take some rough measurements and start to get an idea in my head. And once I have that idea, I start to translate that onto paper and define more of each of those dimensions. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. There'd be a bend right here, but it's gonna go up four inches being two inches wide. There'll be a bend. And then that little platform that it can mount onto is gonna be about four inches long, three inches wide. And of course I'm gonna round each of the corners and everything, but I need to basically flatten this layout out and cut it onto my cardboard.
So here's the flat layout of my bracket and here's a good little trick to make sure you get a nice crisp bend line. I'm gonna take my knife and with the edge of the ruler, I'm just gonna lightly score that edge before I make my fold. So check it out guys, nothing too crazy, but we should do a test fit real quick in the vehicle. So I want that part to mate up to that inside surface there. Looks like we're not gonna have any interferences, so that should work well. And we of course also wanna make sure we have plenty of room for this on here. Should be more than enough room for that as well. So we've proven our design here. We know it's gonna work. It's not gonna interfere with anything and we've only used a cheap piece of cardboard. So if we didn't make any mistakes or if this was a much more complicated bracket, we could just cut another one or trim and modify this as needed and very quick to do so. When we go to fabricate this out of plastic, we'll of course wanna clean up some of these corners and make it more refined. We won't want these hard 90 degree edges, but there's no point in doing that now. We can do that later once we transfer this all to plastic. So that's the next step. I'm gonna head on over to the table saw and get myself a little piece of plastic cut out. All right, so we have our piece of material cut here. And just so you guys know, the material I'm using is a quarter inch thick piece of ABS. ABS has really high temperature resistance, so it will be able to withstand the heat inside the engine compartment. And also being nice and thick like this, it's going to be more than strong enough. So the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna take my little template that I created here, and I'm going to transfer these cuts to the piece of plastic. By drawing out those cuts, I know where I need to rough cut this material using the jigsaw. After we do our rough cutting, we're going to use some of these straight templates here. I'll use some template tape to stick them into position on my piece, and then over on the router, I'm going to make nice, perfect straight cuts using a flush trim bit. By the way, this router bit that I'm using is a special flush trim bit that is meant just for plastics. It gives me a really, really nice clean edge and it cuts like butter. If you guys wanna get that bit and some of the other tools that I'm using in this video, check out the links down in the video description. Now, like I mentioned earlier, right now, these corners are pretty sharp. I definitely want to round them off. So I'm gonna use a little radius template. Same thing, gonna template tape it in position and flush trim each of those corners. This takes a little bit of time, but it does give me a much more finished piece. So we're getting closer to a completed bracket here. Obviously we're still going to need to bend this at some point, but what's really important is before we do any bending, we really wanna make sure that we've done all the machining that we need to on this part. So the other thing I wanna do, I've obviously rounded off those corners now. These top edges and the bottom edges still have a rough feel. I wanna hit those real quick with a round over bit on the router. The round over that I'm adding here is super small. Most people probably wouldn't ever even notice it, but it is these tiny little details that I like to add just to give the parts a really finished feel. Now, a quick disclaimer here, I have quite a few friends in the industry that own shops and they always mention how, you know, you guys will take your vehicles to them after seeing some of my videos, which they of course appreciate and I do as well. But you have to remember that if you expect this level of detail, it does take time. So you do have to be willing to pay for that extra time. So now the edges of this have a much more finished look. And if we position this on here, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to start transferring all these different mounting holes and coming up with the mounting solution for where those bolts are gonna go through the vehicle and bolt into a tapped location here on the bracket. So for this, there's definitely some handy tools to have. This is a set of transfer punches that we can use to transfer the center hole locations from our inline fuse holder. And then once we transfer each of those locations, we're going to use our drill and tap set. We're first going to drill a through hole and that's going to be the minor diameter of the thread. And then we're going to use the tap to add the threads into that hole. This will allow us to use some machine fasteners to hold everything in position. In the meantime, underneath the hood here, I've removed the battery just to give myself a little bit more access to make it easier to add these two holes here. They might be a little hard to see, but I think you guys can see them. That is the two mounting holes that the bolts are going to come through and then land into this tapped material. Now we of course still need to bend this piece and much like we did earlier where we scored a line on the back of that piece of cardboard to help influence exactly where it was going to bend, we can do the same thing to our plastic here on the table saw. I'm going to adjust the blade so that it obviously doesn't go all the way through. It just barely needs to go into the edge of the plastic and we're just going to run a cutting pass on this. Here you can see that score line that we cut into the back. It's very, very shallow, probably less 
less than a 32nd of an inch, just enough to influence the start of this bend. So now we need to kind of make ourselves a sandwich of different parts here, and I'm going to use it to kind of clamp this part of the bracket in place. And the trick here is we want to apply template tape between our pieces of wood and our plastic. That way this is held really nicely in position. When it's all said and done, your sandwich should look something like this. The bottom, since I'm gonna be pushing down on this, that's gonna give me my nice crisp bend line. And then the top, I've intentionally set back just a little bit this direction. And that's so that I can make sure I get a lot of heat right on top of that bend. Another good trick here is get a tip like this that allows us to focus that heat only on that line there. Obviously we want to avoid melting any of our thread hold locations. So let's get this heated up and bent. So here we have it guys, our bent bracket now ready to be installed. So now I can add those fasteners at the top. These are 1024 size fasteners. I have four of them that are of course going to hold that inline fuse onto the top of the bracket. So we've got our little assembly here. Now we just need to use those two holes on the back side, which are drilled and tapped and get that mounted to the side here. So once I've done that and reinstalled the battery, check it out guys, we now have our fully mounted inline fuse holder. This is good and solid in here. It's not going anywhere. We don't have to worry about any temperature issues. We don't have any rough edges or anything. Everything looks really finished and nice. Let's look at it from another angle here. So obviously the next step on this is installing the wiring. Now, if you wanna see how I installed the amplifiers and did all the wiring for this project, check out my other videos here on the channel. And stay tuned as we continue this build to make an underseat box for four subwoofers. Next time you need wire and wire accessories, definitely check out show sponsor New Concepts. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And as always, thank you for tuning in and watching.